What's up folks, Crush SG chiming in with a weapon recommendation video. So with the shop reset bringing back the Black Cliff weapons, I've gotten many comments asking for recommendations regarding these weapons for various characters. Now whether this applies to you or not is entirely dependent on what characters you main and what other weapons you have available to you. Giving the weapons a once over, we can see that they come with crit damage as a secondary bonus and with crit stats being one of the most valuable DPS stats, this adds enough value to some of these weapons for them to be at least considered at R1 if you don't have better options. Now the key word here is some. I do not think all of them are equally viable. Anyway, the value of having crit rate or crit damage on the weapon's secondary indirectly comes down to RNG dampening. Depending on your build, you will probably be trying to get some form of crit stat on your headpiece but RNG isn't always in your favour. Having a weapon that grants one of these stats effectively takes half of the potential artifact RNG out of the equation. On the flip side, if you already have good artifact RNG, having more crit damage certainly couldn't hurt. Another thing to point out is a pattern regarding their stat distributions. The weapons with 42 base attack come with 12% crit damage, and those with 44 base attack come with 8% crit damage. Now this translates to 510 base attack with 55.1% crit damage and 565 base attack with 36.8% crit damage respectively at level 90. The differences are largely inconsequential for most characters but could make a difference for select characters with unique kits like Albedo or to an extent Noel. Now the main downside to these weapons is their bonus effect. It grants an attack bonus for 30 seconds on kill that stacks up to 3 times. There are 3 problems here. First, it stacks on kill, meaning it only starts to bring value after the first kill, effectively making it useless till you get that kill and largely inconsequential in content where you can't get multiple kills in quick succession, such as boss fights or some upper abyss chambers where enemies die a lot slower. The second problem is that gaining new stacks don't refresh the duration of previous stacks, as it says in the description, independent stack duration. This means unless you are in a situation where you are able to chain kill enemies one after another all the time, it's going to be pretty hard to maintain all three stacks at all times. The third issue is the bonus itself isn't huge at only 12% attack per stack at R1, for a 36% total at max stacks. Yes, this does increase to 24% per stack and a 72% max at R5, which isn't half bad but it comes at the cost of 120 glitter and a 2 shop cycle weight. That's 24 wish pulls that could go to any given banner so F2P or low spending players will want to take that into consideration. That being said, 24 wish pulls for a max refined 4 star weapon isn't exactly terrible value. And this is kind of the underlying point for most of the Black Cliff weapons. Their value is largely dictated by what else the respective weapon class has to offer. The more useful alternatives available to a given weapon class, the less value any given Black Cliff weapon has. Alright, looking at each weapon, first up we have the Warbow. Now, bow units are far from my speciality, but based on what I know about them, there are quite a few exceedingly good alternatives out there for most bow units, so having any of those other options, depending on the unit you are using, could diminish the value of the Black Cliff Warbow. Of course, if you don't have any of the other options, you should indeed consider the Black Cliff Warbow. Next, we have the Sword, and again, there are a number of very good alternatives in the Sword Weapon class. We have the 3 star fillet blade and the harbinger of dawn, which are both extremely competitive weapons and the 4 star arsenal brings very good options too. Not to mention we now have the festering desire from the dragon spine campaign that we can get to max refine for free. With all of these options available to sword units, it's tough to make an argument for the black cliff sword especially if you need a dupe of a character that is available in the shop at any given point. Now as for the catalyst, I have to step aside for this one and let other content creators take the lead. I have very little experience with catalyst users, only really using Ning Guang and for a period Klee. I can only speculate about these options and I rather not do that because I don't want to spread any potential misinformation. 
Onto the Claymore, and as someone who personally uses a lot of Claymore units, I can say with relative confidence that the Blackcliff Claymore probably isn't worth the glitter, despite it actually looking pretty decent on paper. Now this comes down strictly to the value proposition, because there are three Claymores effectively guaranteed to every player that are rather competitive weapons. We have the three star Skyrider Greatsword, the craftable prototype Archaic or Eminus, and the new craftable Snow Tomb Star Silver. Of course, we also have the White Blind, but that's just good on Noel. With all these free or low cost options on the table, it's tough to justify the 24 glitter cost of the Blackcliff Claymore. That being said, I do have an R5 level 90 Blackcliff Claymore myself, so that could seem pretty hypocritical. But my justification of this is the fact that I am not F2P or low spending, and I actually use four Claymore units concurrently across my two primary Abyss teams. Noel, Razor, Chongyun, and Sin Yen. I simply needed a fourth Claymore and the Black Cliff Slasher was available in the shop at the time. Alright, finally we have the Black Cliff Pole, and this is an interesting one. There are currently two polearm users in the game. Xiangling and Zhong Li. If you run either of them as a carry unit, this would apply somewhat less to you. But if you run them as burst supports like I do, where you only swap to them to use their burst, you'd realize that the pickings are extremely slim for support weapon options. We have the Favonius Lance for energy regen, the Royal Spear which is a lackluster stat stick, the Dragon's Bane, which is only good on Xiang Ling, and the Death March from the Battle Pass, which is actually pretty good, but probably low on anyone's Battle Pass weapon list because of how great the other options are for many more units. Quite literally, every other polearm, including the 5 stars, either buff your normal and charge attacks or require you to be on the field to stack their respective bonuses making them either suboptimal for support use or in the case of the 5 stars, just basically raw stat sticks with useless bonuses. Because of this, I'd say if you run Zhongli or Xiangling as burst support units, don't have any 5 star polearms just lying around, don't need the energy recharge from the Favonius Lance or don't have the Dragon's Bane for Xiangling, you should definitely consider the Black Cliff Pole. R1 is really all you need. Alright folks, that's pretty much it for today's video. As always, thumbs up if you liked it, down if you didn't, crush that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.